So I'm Robert Mailing, and I'm here on behalf of Supercon Online. Uh, this evening I am interviewing Travis Nye. Travis, thank you for coming on Supercon. Yeah, absolutely. I'm excited to be back. So, well, yeah. virtual for the first time, but excited to be a part of Supercon again. You've been uh, you've been a part of Supercon now for three years, two years. You know, I lose track of it. I know the first one, I was actually there to kind of represent uh, you a little bit. Yeah, you were doing a little mixing magic, kind of like trying to steer people towards my booth. Right, and that was, uh, that was at the Ramada. Yeah. And then, um, this is the, so then I've been at the Premier Center, or the Convention Center twice, so this will actually be the fourth year. Nice. So I've technically been in it all four, uh, but the first one I kind of like snuck in. Because I ended up being my own booth in the end because somebody didn't show up and then I was drawing too much of a crowd. Yeah. And so they're like, yep, you can't be here. we got to move you elsewhere. Tra Travis has that effect on people. I know. Just drawing a crowd. Um, so, yeah, you are a magician, a yeah. master of the arcane arts. Professional liar. There yeah. you go. <laughs> um, so for those who, who don't know, aren't familiar with you, tell us a little bit about your, your magic story. Like, what... What got you into magic? Yeah, so I think we have enough time. I don't get to share the long version very often, but it's the best version. Um, so, and it's really not that long. Okay. Um, but essentially... I was going to um, say, that does have a battery on it. No. Right. <laughs> um, essentially, every kid gets a magic kit. I mean, almost every kid. I've found a couple people like, no, I never got one. So, which that's fine. Because, you know, when I got my magic kit, I, I literally threw about half of it away. I didn't know what to do with it, whatever. I thought it was cool, a, a couple tricks, but I'm like, that's never going to fool anybody because I knew the method without seeing the presentation first. Um, so I dabbled with that a little bit, and that kind of got me into magic. But uh, before that, actually, even in elementary school, a magician came to my school and uh, performed a magic trick, they performed a show, and I got to go up and help him out. And uh, you know, To this day, I, I know how the trick is done, but I've never performed it because it's like my trick. You know, It's like something that I'm like, nope, nobody else can experience this around me. Like This is my story. This is my trick. Uh, but essentially, we made a, a pocket out of a newspaper, uh, me and the person performing. We poured water in our pockets and then did a magic word, turned it over, his water disappeared, and mine went all over my shoes. Uh -uh. I know. And then I was like, you know, I was like, that's awesome. And I didn't even care about getting wet. Um, and so he's like, you want to do it again? I'm like, of course. <laughs> and so we did it. And of course, I got wet again. Um, and so that was like the first time that I actually experienced magic. And it's crazy because I think I was probably like six or seven years old. And I still remember it. Like it was like, it's, that's it's, awesome. it stood with me forever. Um, and then that's when I got the magic kit and then started playing with magic tricks a little bit and I lost interest really quick because I didn't understand it. I didn't understand how to perform it. Um, then later in the early 90s there was a magic show on television called The World's Greatest Magic. Um, it showcased you know 15 magicians every night. It was a two night show right around Halloween. And they did this for about four years. Uh, I think it was like John Ritter hosted it most of the times, okay. so that was like in John Ritter's like that's prime. Age, that's an age check right there. <laughs> yes. Um, so yeah, he hosted that show along with a couple other people, and you know every magician got like eight to ten minutes to perform and got to do their little piece. You know, and it was super entertaining. I look forward to it every year. And then there was one magician who came on, uh, Lance Burton. Uh, he came on and he did this amazing routine, didn't speak, didn't talk, like other magicians are relying on, you know, interaction with the audience, the comedy, the misdirection and stuff. He didn't speak, he just performed strictly to music. It was a, a candle routine where the candles would appear and disappear in the light and then turn into more candles. And then it turned into like doves would appear from out of nowhere and disappear and all these different things, you know. Nice. Uh, it was super cool to watch. And like watching that, it was no longer like, tricks to me but that was like the first time again it was like real magic because i was like oh my gosh that's amazing and it instantly reminded me of that time that i was in elementary school and got to help a magician so i got that feeling of magic again i was like i have no idea how he's doing this this is awesome and of course at that time i was grounded so i didn't have anything cool in my room to play with anything like that video games whatever my vhs player was taken um, <laughs> and uh so, yeah, of course, my parents let me watch the show because that's what I look forward to every year. And so I went to my room, and I'm like, I'm going to teach myself magic tricks. And so I grabbed a deck of cards, and I was trying to learn magic. And after a couple of days of trying to figure something out, the best trick that I had is I took an entire deck of cards. I went to my parents. like, Mom, Dad, pick a card. They did that. I said, put it back in the deck. I did that, put the entire deck in my pocket. 
And I said, if I pull your card out of my pocket, would you be impressed? And they're like, yeah. And so I pulled, I fumbled around for a little bit, pulled out the entire deck, and I said, it's in there somewhere. That was like the height of my magic career in the beginning. It was, it was terrible, terrible, terrible magic. Um, so about a year and a half of just really like the sympathetic, like, oh, that's awesome, <laughs> you know? And then like slowly my parents losing enthusiasm and my friends are like, no, I don't want to see that. Get away. <laughs> um, <laughs> but I'm like, I got to find one. Uh, eventually there is a foreign exchange student from Russia. His name was Victor. I think they're all named Victor for the most part. Yeah. Um, and I don't know his last name and I don't think I could pronounce it. But um, he's like, oh, I heard you're trying to learn magic. And I was like, yeah. And so he showed me a trick and it blew my mind. I'm like, how do people do this? You know, I'm like, okay, apparently this is just a hidden talent some people have. Um, so it took months and months of begging. And just before he went back to Russia, he taught me how to do the trick. And then I practiced for about like a week. And I showed my parents, and reluctantly, they're like, yeah, let's see it. And so I showed them the trick. And that was the first time I got, like, the genuine reaction of amazement. Nice. Where, like, I felt it. Where I had that same feeling performing as I did as that, like, six-year-old kid watching the magic show in elementary school. I was like, that's what it feels like. That is awesome. And so from that point on, I'm like, that's what I want to do. Like, that's what I want to recreate over and over and over and over. And so that's, I've been doing magic tricks since I was, like, 14. Wow. So, how, how many years of magic is that? You may make me do math. Math is the real <laughs> magic, my friend. <laughs> well, I'm going to safely say 14, even though the math doesn't add up. I know in there I took a couple years off. Well, and with the magical time travel adventures there, that you were really into those back in like 2015. Yeah, stuff, so. yeah, yeah. I remember in uh, 2028 when I used to do that stuff. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Back in 1919. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So those were good. Little times. layover over there. Yeah, they didn't like it as much there. It's pretty sketchy, so I had to jump ahead. <laughs> <laughs> it's a pitchfork thing, you know. It's not good. But. So we've talked about how you got your start. Uh, did we talk a little bit about? Um, you know what? You're more than a magician. You you're more than a magician, Travis. That's what my parents keep telling me. You're more than that. <laughs> no, uh, you you you're running a magic shop here. This yeah. is the wonderful venue that uh, we are recording at right now. Yeah. Uh, with your own theater, which is totally awesome. Right. That's like my dream come true. Yeah, that's probably every magician's dream come right? true, right? Yeah. Yeah. That and the whole David Copperfield level of like money, but you know, <laughs> right? That, those those two are 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 the are the goals. Yes. Um, money and power. No. <laughs> uh, so, no, you you run a magic shop out of the front of this magic theater. Yeah. Uh, so I, you know, like I always joke about I'm an evangelist for podcasting because yeah. I, I, it's not enough for me to get you to listen to a podcast. I want you to start a podcast and right. teach you all about how to do it. And you do that with magic, I think. You teach yeah. classes and you, you know, you've got this shop where you're, you're like showing, you're not just selling supplies to other magicians you're right. you're really promoting magic tell us about that yeah so it's interesting one i kind of like laugh internally every time a new customer walks in because they're like oh we're just seeing what it is and i'm like you have no idea because you're not supposed to <laughs> like you don't know what you're looking at um but that's the nice thing it goes back to like when i had that magic kit and i really didn't know what it did and i just threw it away for the most part right now when kids or even adults i find are coming in and like oh yeah i used to have a magic kit and i'm like well cool let me show you a magic trick and i do that and I'm like what <laughs> like that and then they want to learn it or they get a little excited about it um, same thing with kids like I literally tell them like whatever you see here Let me know what you're interested in. I'll show you what it does I'll actually perform it for you and even if you have a magic kit at home that you don't use or don't know what it does Bring it in like trust me. I will amaze you with it and uh, That's gone a long ways people actually seeing the difference from you know kind of I mean I get it online shopping is easy You can get everything online. I have an online store now for the shop for that purpose sure, but actually being able to physically see what everything in here does. Have a magician actually demonstrate how it's it supposed totally to work. It is totally different. That's like a whole, a whole other level. Yeah. Um, so it's no longer a toy. Like, it's pretty BA. <laughs> like, it's like, whoa, that is awesome. And even one of the videos here in my set, that jaw droppers, that's what I started with. I mean, that's like early 90s DVD magic tricks. Okay. But that's what I tell every kid to come in here. I'm like, that's what you want. And they're like, I don't have a DVD player. 
I'm like, do you have a PlayStation? He's like, yeah. I'm like, you have, you have a, a DVD, DVD player. Oh, yeah, it plays video. <laughs> like, yeah, not just games, man. So they get that, but then they come back, and they're like, holy smokes, that thing is awesome. And I'm like, yeah, and it's just magic that you can do at home with the stuff you already have. And it teaches you kind of the foundations and the basic principles. But it's still tricks in there that I perform today. Like, it's professional quality magic. It just looks kind of hokey because it was designed in the 90s. But the fact that it's held up since the 90s as far as, like, the actual magic they're doing, right. that's pretty cool. Yeah, yeah. And that's the cool thing about it. Like, once you learn the basics, you can really create anything. And, like, it's, it's kind of cliche to say that anything is possible with magic, but it is. <laughs> I mean... Anything. Anything. Um, <laughs> that, that needs to be, like, our transition. <laughs> exactly. That's what they'll use in the trailer is both of us going, Anything! Yeah. <laughs> At a rainbow in post. Oh, right? Uh, <laughs> tangent. Okay. <laughs> That's all I can think about now. Like, I want to build on that concept. Um, the doves flying. Okay, I gotta stop. Okay, John Woo. <laughs> <laughs> yes. um, but no, like, honestly, even though, like, you go to a magic show and say, like, the magician's on stage and he's flying across the stage and floating or floating other people, you know it's just a trick. But when you go home or you talk to somebody at work about, oh, what'd you do last night? Which this magic show was it good? Like, yeah, this guy just flew across the stage. That's the way they're going to explain it. They're not going to say, yeah, this guy was hooked up to these wires. You couldn't see him. But he basically, they lifted him off the stage and then they moved him around back and forth. Like, now that turns into a horror show. Um, <laughs> right? Like, it's all perspective. But they always explain it like, yeah. He disappeared. He vanished into nowhere. This lion or this tiger just appeared out of nowhere. He made you know somebody's one dollar bill turn into a hundred dollar bill, and so really it's magical for them in the moment because they get lost in that moment if they're a good performer. Um, the audience gets lost in that moment, and then when they tell other people, it seems so far fetched that they're like, "No way, no way, that can't be true." And then like magic shows almost become like a legend, like. There's no way that happened. I'm like, yeah, I seen it. And so then more people get interested. And so I've kind of seen that here at the shop too. It's like a snowball effect where people come in and they're like, I heard the shop's cool. And I'm like, yeah, it I is. I heard the shop's cool. <laughs> like I've had people actually say that. And I'm like, yeah. The it's young people cool. say I'm cool. My mom does. <laughs> As opposed to me or with my podcast, my mom thinks it's cool. <laughs> Your mom leaves a lot of cool comments. That's true. My mom is extremely active on Facebook. <laughs> and that's all I'm going to say because I could picture that going sideways. <laughs> anyway. Uh, yeah. So uh, I, I love it that you, you're out here. You're not just like practicing the craft, but you're spreading it to other people. Yeah. Um, I make it sound like a COVID PSA. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Don't. Spread spread the magic, not the COVID. There you go. That's the new slogan right here. I'm gonna put it on the window. Yeah, we're gonna we're gonna print a sign and everything. <laughs> but no, uh, so speaking now more to your magic, what have you got coming up as far as performances? Yeah, so uh, we'll back up just a little bit to what I've done in the shop, and we'll build up to what I have coming up. Okay. Um, so when I first you're like, oh, you'll get a list of future performances. Oh yeah, they're coming. <laughs> so uh, starting off, you know, I was a little hesitant to even have a show to begin with, just because of the whole COVID thing. Yeah. And everybody asked me like, well, how's business with COVID? I'm like, it's normal because that's the only thing I know. Because I actually opened up the doors like the first week after COVID was announced. I remember. Yeah, and it was like everybody, like my friends and family, were like, "Are you sure you should be doing this?" I'm like, "Sign the papers. I'm paying rent. Might as well." Um, and it's gone great. Um, people are interested. They actually just want to get out and experience things. Yes. And so there's really like no entertainment going on, and that's one of the reasons I chose the West Side um, here at Forty First and Marion. We haven't really said that yet. Yeah, 41st and Marion. Yes. Yes. Um, <laughs> um, because there's not really much entertainment on this side of town either. Um, and so that's cool to have just a little venue, something to do. As a guy who lives two blocks away from here. Right. Uh, yeah, that's very true. <laughs> right. <laughs> um, and so basically, yeah, the first show I did, I just decided to go for it. I'm like, you know what? I don't really care. It's people who don't want to come aren't going to come. People who want to come are not going to really care about restrictions and all the other stuff really anyway. So the first show I did, I called it Act One, because it was the first show. 
uh, sold out, which was great. It was very everybody here in Sioux Falls, and I think everywhere is very last minute <laughs> on getting tickets or Sioux showing Falls up to especially has that reputation. Yeah, so it was like uh, the theater seats at most thirty people. I try to keep it around twenty just for comfortable seating. Right now, I can do a little bit more uh, depending on the event. But um, I think like two days before the show, I had like four tickets sold, and I'm like, okay, this might not work out might just have a really cool show for four people and then like the day of that morning i just kept getting email like oh so and so purchase a ticket purchase a ticket purchase a ticket i'm like sweet <laughs> like we did that live podcast event it was the same thing yeah uh, at white wall sessions because i think we we literally that day like that day i went to the counter i was like how many advanced ticket sales have we had and he pulls it up on the computer uh None. <laughs> I was like, oh, wonderful. But we about filled the little seating area they had yeah. once we got going. It was just, yeah. yeah no. I watched, it, uh, I watched it online, and there's good reactions in the audience and stuff, so I couldn't see them for the most part, but I knew there was an audience, so there that was were, nice. There were people there. That's awesome. It wasn't just me with a, with a soundboard. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, yeah, so I did that show. It went great, and that told me, you know, let's move ahead with doing more stuff in the theater, actually use it while I have it. And... Um, then I started doing classes. Uh, that was an experimental moment there because I've done classes in the past here in Sioux Falls, and I've had students drive um, like two hours away to do these classes, and it was every weekend for eight Saturdays. And every Saturday they'd drive that two hours to come to this class. And so that was really cool to know that people were eager and wanting to do it. And so with it being summer, again, thinking the pools aren't really open, people want something to do, I'm going to have a noon class and a 6 p.m. class. We're going to see, you know, what time slot people want. One person showed up to the noon, but then the 6 p.m. class sold out. So I'm like, cool. One-on-one, -on -one, no problem. We'll get you in and out. And then I did another class later on. And so I'm like, let's try 3 o'clock and 6 o'clock. Like four people signed up for the 3 o'clock, 6 o'clock sold out. <laughs> so I'm like, okay, no more afternoon stuff. Everybody wants evening. So if you guys are planning an event, always do it in the evening. And then um, I did a kid show, which went really well, was, or I should say a family show, it was an all ages show, because people wanted to, kids wanted to come to that first show, but the act one was kind of catered towards adults a little bit, because yep. I knew they were the ones that wanted to get out and do something. Kids have plenty of stuff going on. And once the parents are hooked, then they're going to want to bring their kids. So exactly. that's, that's pretty much what I did there. Um, and then after that, I did another class, and that one went great. And then I started getting into private birthday parties. So people would pay to rent the, the venue, the theater, and another back room back there for four hours. Uh, 20 kids come and have a birthday, all that good stuff, cake and presents, and then they get a half-hour magic show, and then the birthday kid gets a magic kit. Nice. And so that was super cool to, to do a couple of those. I actually have another one coming up next weekend. And then I think I've done three shows total, uh, public shows, two private shows, and like four classes. So it's, I've been pretty busy in the six months that I've been open. Yeah. Um, so that's great. Um, people are actually interested and whatnot. And I'm just like, that's fantastic with, with the Rona. I'm just like, right. once we get things a little more normal, it's just like, yeah. you'll, you'll be hopping. Yeah, and it's been a snowball effect. Like every month, as far as even sales out here and requests for the shows and theaters and stuff, has constantly grown, which is nice to see. Um, now, what I have coming up is I've just finished my last class um, last weekend, and now my class or my shows in October. This will be the fourth year in a row I've done these called A Magician Among the Spirits. Um, it's actually the title of the last book Houdini published in 1924. Um, you know, not to say what's true or false, I'm on the fence either way, but Houdini basically published a book debunking psychics and mediums and all these different things, showing their methods that they would use during a seance. Um, the way that they would use, you know, common verbiage and stuff like that to get people to believe. Cold most, reading. Yeah. Uh, stuff what, like that. What was with the Fox sisters, like bells under the table or some, yes. some apparatus or something like yeah, that? Yeah, all that stuff. False walls where there's people behind the walls working switches and making oh, yeah. noises, fans. But you know, Houdini and, being Houdini, he'd seen it all and was just like, there's a wire yeah. up there. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And it's actually a really, really fascinating story, like how all that came into play and stuff. But he's essentially trying to get in touch with his mother who'd passed away. Yeah. And put up a sum of ten thousand dollars which in 1920s was a lot of money yeah it was a lot of money saying that anybody who can prove to truly get me in 
contact with my mother will get the sum of ten thousand dollars those of you who are fraud I will call you out in public and so that's what this book does essentially um, so with that being said the show is based around Houdini um, and it's the entire show set in the 1920s this year I wanted to change the show a little bit okay so um, I haven't gone into great depth of talking about the show as to what it is but um, basically this one is still going to take place in the 1920s but I will be playing the role of a detective okay. on stage rather than a magician and the audience is going to be choosing the outcome of the show cool so it's like playing a real life game of clue as to who what where when and why did this crime take place that's awesome. So okay. whatever the audience chooses, whatever the location is, that's going to be where the story turns, as well as the performance based and what routines I perform. Because I've been to previous Magician Among the Spirits performances that yes. you've done. Uh, you know, they're, they're a lot of fun. This sounds really interesting. Yeah, uh, to be able to wrap my head around it, to like put it into a working piece, has proven to be very challenging. So I'm hoping, you know, every time there's a new show, it continually grows into a better and better show. Um, so I'm still working on the scripting and kind of the organizing it a little bit. But there, the way I have it set up now, um, I mean, every show that you come, you could come to all four shows and it could be a different show every time. You're, you may not see the same routine. You may not see the same characters. The timelines might be different. Um, and, and that's going to change what I perform, too. Um, so if in the end, say, for instance, um, the person that is suspected to create this crime is a, uh, a gambler, you will see a presentation or a part of a routine uh, of the show that is essentially all based around casino and gambling. If it ends up being a, the psychic or the mind reader that does it, you're going to see something uh, very hef heavy on, you know, like that cold readings and the psychic stuff. If you, you yeah. think it's the daredevil or whatever, you might see me do a real life bullet catch in the theater. Um, and that's stuff that I'm working on, like trying to make sure that I don't die. You be careful. That's what I'm hoping for. Those things are dangerous. It's true. Yeah, I heard especially on the other end of it. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, and so different things like that. If you think it's going to be the variety performer or whatever, the, the street performer, that's what I might do. Like my fire eating axe or the eating the glass or whatever. So um, basically, yeah, we're going to find out what kind of show we put together and it's all up to the audience. That is really awesome. Yeah. And so in the end, it will, it, it'll make sense to one big conclusion in the end is me as the detective already knowing what everybody has chosen. So Very ends. cool. Yeah, so I'm excited about that. So um, I have three tickets, or three shows with tickets already available through my Facebook page, and that is the last, maybe it's four, I can't remember how many Saturdays they are in October. Um, we'll just look at the calendar, but I know the first weekend in October, the 3rd, I do not have a show, but the 10th, 17th, 24th, and 31st, nice. I have shows. Um, and if those sell out as I ex suspect them to, because the previous shows had 60 seats per show, and this is yep. only like 20, 25 exactly. or 30. So um, if they sell out, I will add more shows based on the demand of shows to where they might be Friday shows or Saturday or Sunday afternoon shows or whatever people's schedule and availability is. Um, but yes, so, and those are recommended for 16 and up just because I have some things in there. Nothing's vulgar or offensive. It's just don't try these at home. Right. And so I don't want like eight-year-old kids be like, yeah, mom, check this out. Um, but if the parents are like okay with it and comfortable with it, then I don't have a problem with anybody coming to the show either. Sure. So, um, so that's nice, and I do have another company that uh, a small office that's looking at just purchasing one entire show for their private event too. So that's available also. Nice. So, but yeah, I'm excited about it. Every year, that that's like one of my favorite shows to do. Well, sir, I would ask you if you had any shameless plugs while we got you here. <laughs> I think we, I think we've covered live performances. You've got the magic yeah. shop. What is the uh, address for the online shop? I don't know if you mentioned that. Yeah, so it's just spellboundmagicshop.com. Okay. Yep, and that... Um, spellboundmagicshop.com. There you go. Um, and that is actually just being built. I've added a lot of things to it, but I just found out one of my uh, magic suppliers has the CSV file to where I can literally now just click upload and it uploads their shop to my page. Nice. So I'm no longer, after like three weeks of adding individual items one at a time of graphics and descriptions and links and prices, now I can just be like, bloop, 3,000 nice. items. Because <laughs> you're a magician, not a web designer. That's true. <laughs> <laughs>
So that that took a lot of a lot of work out of it. I just got that email today. So thank goodness you're going to see that website like blow up here in the next day or two. Very awesome. Well, this will come out uh, October. So buy now. Yeah. <laughs> so it's out there now. Go. Yeah. Get it. Get it. Yeah, and you know what? If you want to come to the show, we'll do twenty um, percent off on tickets for that because it's only fifteen dollars ticket, so that saves you a little bit, three bucks per ticket. So we'll just use promo code SuperCon. Very nice. Yeah. Well, Travis, thank you so much for joining me. Absolutely. Uh, thank you, SuperCon, for watching and uh, enjoying this uh, interview. I've been Robert Mailing with uh, the Sioux Empire Podcast. That's the Sioux Empire Podcast .com If you're interested in what I do, a South Dakota Stories and History Podcast. Uh, I've been here hosting for SuperCon, and uh, we'll see you all in the next one. <laughs>